Gordon is a very proud steam engine. He's the fastest engine on the island of Sodor. He loves speeding along his line with the wind blowing across his funnel. You've broken the record again, said his driver. I'm the fastest, boasted Gordon. But not all the engines were impressed. Speed isn't everything, said James smugly. But being reliable and useful is, said Thomas. You slow engines will never understand, snorted Gordon, because you'll never go as fast as me. Sir Topham had arrived with news of a special for Thomas. I want you to collect a jet engine and take it to the airfield. What's a jet engine? asked Percy. A jet engine goes forward by pushing hot air out of its back, Sir Topham had explained. Just like when you blow up a balloon and let it go, added Thomas. It's very fast. Thomas likes making special deliveries for Sir Topham Hatt. It makes him feel special. But secretly, he wished he could go as fast as Gordon. Just once. Thomas arrived at the docks excited to see the jet engine. It was shiny and modern, and Thomas had never seen anything like it. He couldn't wait to start his journey. But Cranky was taking his time. Hurry up, Huff Thomas. This is a special special. Cranky did not like being told what to do, especially by an engine. He became so cranky that he was careless with his hook. His hook knocked the switch, and the switch started the jet engine. And the engine began to whine. The whine got louder and louder and louder. Uh-oh, said Cranky. Before he could say anything else, the jet engine was rocketing Thomas up the track. Whoa, said Thomas. The driver tried to put on the brakes, but Thomas couldn't stop. Whoa, boy! The station master called ahead. Clear the lines. It's a runaway train. Signals were changed and points were switched. Thomas had never been so excited. Thomas flew by James and rocketed past Henry. And raced by Percy. They were amazed. Bertie was excited when he saw Thomas flying down the track. Wanna race, Thomas, beeped Bertie? Never mind. No one had ever seen an engine go so fast. Gordon had no idea that Thomas was racing along the main line. I am the fastest, said Gordon proudly. Bye, Gordon. Bye, Gordon. Gordon could not believe what he had seen. At last, the jet engine ran out of fuel, and Thomas was back under his own power. He steamed gently back into Knapford Station. Sorry for overtaking you back there, Gordon, teased Thomas. Overtake me? I didn't notice, Gordon huffed. You didn't notice the fastest engine on the island of Sodor, said Henry? Yes, I am the fastest, puffed Thomas. Percy felt a little sorry for Gordon. Gordon doesn't have to go as fast as a jet engine. He's a steam engine. But he's still full of hot air, whistled James. And Gordon wished away.
In the summertime, the Branch Line Station Masters enjoy a friendly competition for the most beautiful station on the island of Sodor. The engines love to help too. One evening, Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. I want Percy to collect some flower bushes for Lower Tidmouth Station, he said. They're at Maithwaite. Maithwaite, Percy said? Y -y yes sir, he added nervously. Percy chuffed anxiously through the thickening fog. He doesn't like traveling to Maithwaite at night. The line passes through a junction next to a spooky old quarry mine. Percy hoped the signal at the junction would be green. He didn't want to stop next to the mine, but the signal was red. He had to stop. Suddenly, he saw something. Bouncing buffers, cried Percy. His driver hadn't seen the old chimney sink into the ground. The signal changed. Percy was so scared, he steamed away as fast as he could. The next day, Percy was telling Donald and Douglas about the disappearing chimney. It's the naughty gnomes, teased Donald. We fat men with big feet, they make strange things happen, said Douglas. It's legend. They steal your wheels and filch your funnels. Percy didn't want to believe them, but he wasn't sure. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Percy at Dry Aw Station. I want you to collect some freight cars from the abandoned mine, he said. Y -y yes sir, Percy answered, but he really didn't want to go there again. Percy hoped he wouldn't see anything else disappear. He slipped into the sidings and buffered up to the freight cars. Spooky, stammered Percy. Suddenly, another building at the old mine sank into the ground. What was that? shouted his driver. Double bouncing buffers, shrieked Percy. He was so scared, he lurched forward and rammed the freight car. Naughty gnomes, cried Percy. He steamed away faster than before, all the way back to Lower Tidmouth Station. Percy's driver told Sir Topham Hatt what they had seen. It's the naughty gnomes, cried Percy. They like to cause trouble. It's legend. Nonsense, said Sir Topham Hatt. The old buildings are collapsing into empty mine shafts, that's all. But I saw the gnomes, protested Percy. Of course you did, said Sir Topham Hatt. Garden gnomes. Garden gnomes? To decorate Lower Tidmouth Station, Sir Topham Hatt said. They're not scary. Garden gnomes bring good luck. And he ordered Percy to return immediately and get them. Percy was scared, but he knew he had to be responsible, so he carried on. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. He waited for something else spooky to happen, but it didn't. And Sir Topham Hatt was right. The garden gnomes weren't scary at all. His driver and fireman had collected the gnomes, and Percy took them straight back to Lower Tidmouth Station. Later that week, the station master thanked Percy. We wouldn't have won our competition without your garden gnomes, Percy. Percy was very proud. You were right, sir. Naughty gnomes can be lucky after all. Thank you.
engines on the island of Sodor look forward to Halloween. They love Sir Topham Hatt's fireworks and the children dressing up as wizards and witches. They also love Edward's spooky stories. They say that on Halloween, the ghost engine returns to the smelters looking for his lost whistle. Ooh, 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 ah, spooky, the engine said, all shivering a little. Later, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Percy and Duck, I have a special job for you. You want to collect some scrap from the smelter's yard tonight. On Halloween? Don't worry. You will be back in time for the fireworks. Percy isn't worried about missing the fireworks, teased Thomas. He's a scaredy engine. I am not called Percy, but he was a little. At the smelters, all Percy could think about was Edward's ghost engine. Thomas knew Percy was scared, so he teased him even more. What's that up there? Thomas squeaked. Is it a spook? It's just a piece of twisted scrap, Percy said nervously. Isn't it? Thomas was having fun. He kept on teasing Percy. Careful the ghost engine doesn't get you, Thomas said. There's no such thing as ghosts, snapped Percy. Duck felt sorry for Percy. Nobody's brave all the time, said Duck. But I'm not a scaredy engine, Percy insisted. The job was nearly complete. Well done, the yard manager said. Now I'll need one engine to finish up. Duck wanted to pay Thomas back for all his teasing. Please, sir, he said. I'm sure Thomas wouldn't mind staying. Of course not, Thomas boasted. I'm not a scaredy engine. So Duck and Percy left. When Thomas was by himself, Every sound and every shadow was spooky. He was beginning to feel very scared. There's no such thing as ghosts, he said nervously. Who's there? Thomas was so busy looking for ghosts, he didn't watch where he was going. felt like ghost fingers. Something's got me! Thomas wished and set off an old steam whistle. The ghost whistle, said Thomas, and he raced away as fast as his wheels could carry him. It was naughty of Thomas to tease you, Percy, said Duck. He was only playing, said Percy. I hope he hurries up. I wouldn't want him to be late for the fireworks. He's after me! I don't think he'll be late, said Duck. Duck and Percy joined the other engines for the fireworks. Where's Thomas? Percy asked. He'll miss all the fun. It would serve him right after all his teasing, Duck said. But Percy was worried. He went to look for his friend. He found Thomas all alone in the shed. Are you all right, Thomas? He said. Yes. I'm sorry I teased you, Percy, Thomas said. Duck was right. We all feel scared sometimes. And we all have to say sorry sometimes, said his friend. So come on, Thomas. We can watch the fireworks just as well from here. He was right.
Harold the helicopter is glad not to be a steam engine. He is much happier flying in the sky than racing along on road or rails. One sunny morning, the engines were busy preparing for the vicar's annual garden party. I'd like to help, called Harold, but I'm on patrol. He was looking for engines that might be in trouble. Meanwhile, the engines puffed to and fro with their loads for the party. Percy was delivering deck chairs and decorations, tables and tea urns, and reminders. Don't forget to come to the vicar's party! Thanks for the invitation, called Harold. But duty calls, and he whirred away. Harold was landing at his airfield to get more fuel when he saw Pegasus, the cart horse that lives close by. Pegasus was getting ready to give rides to children. He had a shiny leather harness and a freshly painted cart. Harold was beginning to feel left out of the celebrations. He wished more than ever that he could help. Thomas puffed in with some passengers. Where are you going next? buzzed Harold. To the vicar's party, of course. Everyone's going. Everyone except me, replied Harold. I'm on duty. Yes, indeed, said Thomas kindly. Being a rescue helicopter is important work. But no one needs rescuing, sighed Harold. Then came the surprise. Harold's pilot received an urgent call from Sir Topham Hatt. Pegasus is stuck in a ditch. If he doesn't get to the vicar's party, the children will be disappointed. You must rescue him at once. All set and ready for action, reported Harold. Pegasus, wondered Percy. That's a funny name for a horse. It's the name of a flying horse in a very old story, explained Sir Topham Hatt. Flying horse, exclaimed Percy. Horses can't fly. He felt very clever. Harold flew to the rescue as fast as he could. What happened? he asked Thomas. We were loading the cart. Pegasus wandered off into the ditch. Silly horse, now he's stuck. If you can take him, I can take the cart. I'll put Pegasus in my sling. We need to hurry, whistled Thomas. The party is about to begin. And he steamed away. Soon, Harold's pilot had fitted Harold's sling under Pegasus. Then, Harold gently lifted him into the air and carefully carried him across the fields. When Percy saw Pegasus flying through the sky, he was amazed. Well, flatten my funnel so horses can fly after all. The children cheered for Harold. He had saved the day. Soon, Pegasus was hitched up to the cart. The party was a big success, and the children had a wonderful time. Harold was happy. He stayed on duty and had fun at the party, too.
In the summertime, there is no better place to be than the island of Sodor. The engines are happy to show vacationers the wonderful sights to be seen. But this year, there was a problem. Thomas and Emily were in the foundry for repairs. I need to find a way to carry more passengers, grumbled Sir Topham Hatt. We have more vacationers and fewer engines, said Emily. A double-decker problem, added Thomas. A double-decker problem? Hmm. This gave Sir Topham Hatt an idea. He drove straight to Bulgy's field. Bulgy is a double-decker bus. He was turned into a hen house after he caused a silly accident. Good news, Bulgy. I'm putting you back on the road. Thank you, sir. I'll be the best bus ever. Bulgy never liked being a hen house anyway. The next day, he went to the foundry. Bulgy, exclaimed Thomas. What are you doing here? I'm being repaired. I'm going back on the road. I think you'll be helping the new farmer, said Emily. He needs to deliver his vegetables around the island. Vegetables? <laughs> I'm going to carry passengers. Soon, Bulgy was refitted inside and out. He looked smart and shiny. Even James was impressed. Ooh! When Bulgy returned to his field, the hens thought their old house looked splendid. We'll start in the morning, said his driver. You'll stay here tonight. Bulgy was soon fast asleep. But the hens missed their old home. One by one, they crept aboard and went to sleep in the luggage racks. Bulgy knew nothing. The next morning, Bulgy picked up lots of passengers. All aboard, he tooted, and set off for the station. He was driving so smoothly that the hens didn't wake up. All was well until Bulgy turned a corner. Trevor was pulling a hay cart. Get out of my way! He overtook Trevor. Bulgy swerved. The hens woke up. The passengers panicked. And Bulgy's driver lost control. The hens were frightened. They flapped. They squawked. Stop! cried Bulgy's passengers. We want to get off! The passengers were covered in feathers and broken eggs. They were very cross. This bus is full of hens, they complained. We shall tell Sir Topham Hat. It's not my fault, sulked Bulgy. Sir Topham Hat sent Bulgy to be cleaned. Silly hens, silly passengers, you can have them both. The farmer still needs help with his vegetables, said Emily. A vegetable bus? Hmm, hey, that's not such a bad idea. And we're back carrying passengers, smiled Thomas. Bulgy is happy now. He has new green paintwork and a smart serving hatch. Sir Topham had agreed he could become the island's only vegetable stand on wheels. Bulgy likes carrying vegetables. They don't lay eggs. And they never complain.
Asians love working when the sun shines. One day, Thomas and Percy were helping Salty at the docks. But Salty was worried. Ah, it may be sunny now, matey, but there be a storm coming. It may be sunny now, matey, but there be a storm coming. There be a fierce storm on the way, Captain, peeped Percy. Salty knew they were making fun of him. He felt sad. Later, Sir Topham had arrived. I want you to fetch Fergus from the smelter's yard, he said. His driver doesn't know the line. Aye, aye, sir, replied Salty sadly. Salty was glad he was going to the smelter's. He didn't want to stay where he wasn't liked. What's wrong? asked Emily. Uh, nobody likes to be made fun of by silly tank engines. And he huffed away. Emily knew she had to find Thomas and Percy immediately. Those be dark clouds, matey, whistled Thomas. There be a fierce storm on the way, Captain, peeped Percy. Emily was cross. It's not nice to copy the way others speak. You hurt Salty's feelings. We were just having fun, said Percy. We'll say sorry to him, added Thomas. <laughs> But Salty was nowhere to be found. Thomas and Percy were worried. Fergus was waiting for Salty when he arrived at the smelters. Right on time, congratulated Fergus. Aye, but there's a storm coming, said Salty. We must hurry. Soon they were hooked up and on their way home. Salty was right about the storm. It was a fierce one. The ships at sea depend upon the lighthouse touch to keep them safely off the rocks. But now there was trouble. The lighthouse lamp has gone out, cried the captain. Fergus were fighting their way through the wind and rain. Then Salty saw a lantern ahead. The lighthouse keeper was waiting for him. Our lighthouse lamp has gone out. Our generator is broken. Salty had an idea. Fergus has a flywheel. It could power the generator. Hurry, shouted the lighthouse keeper. Fergus's flywheel was attached to the generator shaft. Without the lighthouse, the ship was steaming towards the rocks. Fergus was working as fast as he could. Finally, the generator came back to life. The lighthouse beam shone across the stormy sea once more. Just in time! Hard to starboard, matey! Salty's idea had saved the day. Fergus worked hard until first light. The next morning, Salty and Fergus chugged back to the docks. They were surprised to see a crowd waiting for them. Thank you, said the captain. You saved our ship. Well done, boomed Sir Topham Hatt. Salty was very proud. We're sorry if we hurt your feelings, puffed Thomas. We were only copying you because we think you're grand. Then say no more, me hearties, replied Salty happily. Now they will all work together and have fun together, as good friends should. <laughs>
that shadow on the wall. Don't be afraid, don't be scared, really is nothing at all. But I saw something in the corner, I saw that shadow on the wall. It's just your imagination, look, it's just the wise old owl. The wise old owl. Look, it's just the wise old owl. 